Welcome to the Monty Collier Report. I am Monty Collier. You know, it's truly incredible. All of these fools today racing to surrender their civil liberties for a safety no man nor government can provide. A long time ago, an intelligent American said the following, and I quote, Natural men's prudence and care to preserve their own lives, or the care of others to preserve them, do not secure them a moment. To this, divine providence and universal experience do bear testimony. There is this clear evidence that men's own wisdom is no security to them from death. That, if it were otherwise, we should see some difference between the wise and politic men of the world and others. With regard to their liableness, to early and unexpected death, but how is it in fact? How dieth the wise man? As the fool. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 16. End quote. Now our founding fathers understood this all too well. This is why they never shut down the workforce, nor closed all the churches, nor quarantined healthy people, even when smallpox raged throughout their cities. Our Founding Fathers were smarter than today's Republicans and Democrats. That intelligent American I mentioned above also stated, and you should pay close attention to this, <laughs> all you scared mask-wearing people, I quote, It is no security to wicked men for one moment that there are no visible means of death at hand. It is no security to a natural man that he is now in health and that he does not see which way he should now immediately go out of the world by any accident, and that there is not visible danger in any respect in his circumstances. The manifold and continual experience of the world in all ages shows this as no evidence that a man is not on the very brink of eternity and that the next step will not be into another world. The unseen unthought of ways and means of persons going out suddenly out of the world are innumerable and inconceivable. Unconverted men walk over the pit of hell on a rotten covering, and there are innumerable places in this covering so weak that they will not bear their weight, and these places are not seen. The arrows of death fly unseen at noonday. The sharpest sight cannot discern them. God has so many different unsearchable ways of taking wicked men out of the world and sending them to hell that there is nothing to make it appear that God hath need to be at the expense of a miracle or to go out of the ordinary course of his providence to destroy any wicked man at any moment. All the means that there are of sinners going out of the world are so in God's hands and so universally and absolutely subject to his power and determination that it does not depend at all, the less on the mere will of God, whether sinners shall at any moment go to hell, than if means were never made use of, or at all concerned in the case. End quote. If you do not believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, you are under God's just condemnation. If you die in this state of unbelief and condemnation, you will burn in hell and the lake of fire forever. Those who do not believe Jesus died for the remission of their sins, they fear death, and rightly so, for it is appointed once for a man to die, then the judgment. The government cannot save you from God's wrath. The government cannot protect you from the wages of sin, which is death. You must flee to Christ alone. You must believe Christ kept the law of God for you, lived and died in your place, had your sins charged to his account, while his righteousness was credited to you, freely granting you a title to eternal life and salvation, justifying you before God's court, and adopting you as one of his children. When we believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven and we have peace with God. Death cannot harm us, but merely take us to Christ and eternal joy. To live is Christ, to die is gain. 
where, O death, is now your sting? Belief in the gospel drives out fear. Jesus tells us, be not afraid, only believe. Only those that believe the gospel can truly be happy. Those that believe the gospel will not sacrifice freedom for safety, for they believe the gospel a truth, and the truth has set them free. Those that believe the gospel are free from the law's condemnation. Christ has conquered death in the grave. They believe in Jesus Christ and they shall never die. Christians are united to Christ by faith alone. Where Jesus is, they shall be. Nothing can separate them from the love of Christ. Not disease, not tyranny, not persecution, and certainly not death. That intelligent American I quoted earlier was Jonathan Edwards. He was a Puritan. He died of a smallpox vaccination in 1758, which proved our imperfect attempts to save lives often fail. I quoted from his most famous discourse. Maybe the most famous discourse in American literature, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Many believe that sermon launched the first Great Awakening, which converted tens of thousands in each English-speaking colony, perhaps hundreds of thousands, uniting the North American colonies in a Calvinistic faith, giving them the courage to oppose tyranny and proclaim liberty throughout the land. You see, Calvinism is historically known for opposing tyrants. For example, the well-known Calvinist John Knox who opposed tyranny in Scotland and during the 1500s said, famously, and I quote, Resistance to tyranny is obedience to God. End quote. In other words, the Great Awakening was a major contributor to the creation of the United States of America. Edwards ended his famous discourse with the following, and I will end this video with the following, and I quote, Therefore, let every one that is out of Christ now awake and flee from the wrath to come. The wrath of Almighty God is now undoubtedly hanging over every unregenerate sinner. Let every one flee out of Sodom. Escape for your lives. Look not behind you. Escape to the mountain, lest ye be consumed. End quote. And amen.